In our country, we have a Junior Olympic qualifier that runs the third uh, weekend of February. It's always President's Weekend. And this is the qualifier for the Junior Olympics. Uh, this is going to be for fencers between, who were born between uh, 1992 and 1998, junior and cadet. Uh, we have foil up a saber, men and women's junior and cadet uh, fencing. So this is the qualifying event for that event. So what is the difference between saber and uh, epi, or hang on, foil and saber, right? Well, there's three different weapons. Two of the weapons are thrusting weapons. That means that you can only make touches with the end of the weapon. That would be foil and epi. Uh, the difference between foil and epi is, in foil, it's just the chest that's the target. In epi, your whole body is the target. The difference between foil and epi in saber is that with the thrusting weapons, you can only make a touch with the end of the weapon. With the saber, you can hit them with any part of the weapon. Um, and uh, But other than that, pretty much the first person who gets a touch gets the point. Okay, now there's the key for it. The rest of it sounds pretty technical, but really you hit them first and you yeah, win. You, pretty much fencing is about making the attack first or causing your opponent to make a mistake and then capitalizing on that mistake and hitting them. So it's, but it's a, it's, really it's a battle of, battle of wills and a, and a battle of strategy. You're trying to cause the other person to make a mental mistake and then take advantage of it. It's kind of like, they call it physical chess for that reason. Really it's one brain fencing against another brain. We just happen to have swords attached to those brains. Uh, how is um, fencing surviving the, re the uh, recession here? Well, you know, it's just like any other sport. Uh, there's always people who, for one reason or another, can't afford to maybe go to as many tournaments. But fencing, um, compared to a lot of other sports, is a pretty inexpensive uh, sport. A lot of the weapons don't cost a lot of money. Um, there's a lot of reasonably uh, priced clubs and, and classes, uh, unlike other sports like, oh, skiing, um, or, well, heck, even badminton. Someone told me they spent $200 for a badminton racket. And fencing actually is pretty cheap, and so people tend to have their equipment, keep it for a long time. Um, it's pretty affordable to get started. But what age do you uh, do a lot of the kids start at? Well, people can start at any time. I started my age, at the age of 36, and so we always, of course, encourage people at any age to fence. A lot of people start when they're like 8 or 10, they may start when they're 16. They may start when they're 25. Really, it's in the Oregon Division, you have people from the age of 8 to 88, um, all fencing. Once you're the age of 40, you have a special uh, division called Veterans, and that's really very fun. So, but uh, we have a wonderful division. It's a pretty small division. In the United States, there are six Olympic coaches, one for foil, epi, and saber for men and women. In Portland here, we have two of the six Olympic coaches. So, especially if you're into men's epi or women's saber, people from all over the country come here to train. But you don't have to be an Olympic contender to pick up fencing. So what's going on next week? There's a big tournament here. There's a huge tournament coming to Portland, and it's free for the public. We'd love for people to know about that. It's going to be at the Oregon Convention Center, and it's what we call a North American Cup. There's five of these North American Cups. This one it happens to be for the top fencers in the country. It will be the top 1,100 fencers for Division One and Junior. Basically, the youngest, quickest fencers uh, are going to be fencing. A lot of people who are going to be competing for the uh, Olympics will be there. And uh, we encourage people to come and watch. Like I said, it's free. And these are the best fencers in the country, and they'll be here fencing for your enjoyment uh, January 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. About how many Oregon kids, uh, Oregon Southwest Washington kids are going to be there? We usually about have 70. Uh, I, like I said, the, two of the Olympic training centers are here in Portland. And so a lot of uh, the country's best fencers already live here in Portland. So obviously it will be nice for them to be able to go to a local tournament uh, and fence in front of a hometown crowd. Uh, so the, the two Olympic training centers there, is this one of them? This is okay. one of them. This is the Northwest Fencing Center, which was started in 2000. It's one of the premier fencing clubs 
in the, in the country. Uh, the men's EPE coach is here. So any young man who is looking to uh, uh, go to the Olympics uh, will be training here. Just one mile away at the Oregon Fencing Alliance, that's the Olympic Training Center for Women's Sabre. And uh, two-time gold medalist uh, Muriel Zagunis trains out of that. Uh, but the, basically the top contenders in the country. For Women's Sabre, they fence only just a mile away. Well, hey, who's, who's the coach for the uh, the women's um That would be Saber. Ed Kurfati. In fact, oh, okay. he was, he was uh, judged by all the other international coaches as being the top coach of the, uh, in the world. So, uh, truly, he's he's from Poland, very nice man, uh, very soft-spoken, but obviously his fencer's results speak for themselves. And the, and the men's coach? That would be Sebastian Dos Santos, and uh, he's not here right now, he's away in a tournament, but uh, all the top uh, FAists uh, train here at the Northwest Sensing Center. So let's see, the um, this year, doggone it, this is, this is an Olympic year, isn't it? This is an Olympic year, <laughs> and so the fencers right now, in the United States, well, and in other parts of the world too, they may fit, decide they're, they're uh, Olympic uh, contenders in other ways. But uh, becoming uh, chosen for an Olympic team partly is how you do at world uh, events, World Cups and that kind of thing. It also has to do with national points. And so you uh, it's not winner take all. The, the top 32 fencers perhaps might get some kind of point. So uh, this next weekend is going to be important for fencers who are kind of on the bubble of qualifying for the Olympics. They want to go to this event so that they can get enough points that will help with their qualification for the Olympics. Right. Hey, are, are there any college fencing programs? Oh, there are quite a few. Um, here in the Portland area, I know PSU, Reed. Um, but those have, are those are just clubs, though. Those are clubs. I mean, there's no like scholarships for. Oh well, you can see a lot of these. Uh, uh, banners here. They all have extremely active uh, fencing uh, programs, NCAA, and uh, in fact I know a young lady, Isabel Ford, and she was accepted into Princeton on scholarship. So there's a lot of fencing uh, programs in, in the country and uh, you know, fencers tend to be a smart crowd, so they, they're probably getting scholarships based on their academics as well as their fencing prowess, but uh, a lot of the really oldest programs, um, in fact, Isabel, uh, hey Isabel, you're going to Princeton? Didn't you get a, you got a scholarship? Now did you get a scholarship based on your fencing? They don't, they don't give athletic scholarships, they just give need-based scholarships. But are you going to be fencing at Princeton? Yes. Yeah, so Isabel Ford here, she got a scholarship, she's going to, she's going to be accepted into Princeton, and so... Um, Cliff here is talking about fencing in college, and I was just mentioning that there are programs in college where you can fence. Yep. Yeah. Very, very, some very strong college fencing programs. What would be some of the colleges where they um, have the strongest programs? Um, Princeton is going to have a killer women's at base squad. I mean, they already do. And that's not because of you, Joanna. Uh, uh, well, they have they have a lot of strong strong at base uh, this year on the women's side uh, and on the men's side too. Uh, yeah. Notre Dame has a really Duke. strong. Olive, Duke yeah. has a really good program. Yeah. yeah. Um, so your banner is going to have to join up here if it's not already yeah. on there. So. Yeah, but then you can kind of get a feel for you know some schools that we traditionally send a lot of people to would be Notre Dame and Duke. They've, they've over the thank you so much over the past they have contributed coaches who have um, enriched our division and in return. Uh, our fencers often want to go to Duke and, and Notre Dame, so it's a win-win for both.